Hey, thanks for taking the time to watch this video and be sure to stick around. At the end, I'm going to share with you a real secret on how to fix your slice. Hey golfers, PGA teaching professional Todd Kolb here with US Golf TV. And what I'm going to be doing over the course of this summer is I'm going to be sharing with you some information and some things that are changing the way that we're understanding how the game is played and also how the game is being taught. And as a golf instructor, this is a very exciting time. I've been teaching the game for well over 20 years and I can honestly say over the last 18 to 24 months, we are literally changing the way that we're teaching the game of golf with advancements in technology, radar, tracking shots on the golf course, and being able for the first time ever to really understand what's happening not only in the golf swing, but also on the golf course. So this education series that we're going to go through over the course of the summer is different than what you're probably normally seeing. Yes, we have information on how to hold the club correctly and how to, you know, uh, roll the ball well or how to hit a bunker shot and we have all of that of course available on our website and it's all over the internet you can find good information in a lot of places but what's going to be unique about this and different is I'm going to share with you leading information cutting edge information that you're not going to find anywhere else because it's literally the stuff that me as a golf instructor we're talking about and we're researching on a daily basis So this is a very exciting process and I can promise you you're going to certainly learn something so the first thing we're going to talk about is shot patterns. And I got it right up here, it's a shot pattern. Now at the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you some research in a book that you, I highly recommend you, you buy and you read because a lot of the information we're gonna talk about here is available there. So let's think about our golf game for a second. I want you to think about when you go to the golf course and you play a round of golf, what type of patterns that you see because every golfer has a pattern to their game. Tiger Woods has a pattern to his shots. Freddie Couples has a pattern to his shots. And you, as a viewer, as a golfer, have a pattern to your shots. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's dig into it a little bit. Every golfer, as we said earlier, has a pattern to their shots. Okay, so let's say from 150 yards, the average golfer, right out here, we're out here at 150 yards, and they hit 10 shots into the green. And we chart every one of those 10 shots. So let's say we've got you know, one here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, something along those lines. All right, we we'd have 10 shots into the green. We've tracked them all and there's a distinct pattern to this. So I want you to right now kind of think about yourself. All right, when I'm hitting shots into the green, is there a pattern of shot that I see? So if I was def to define this pattern right here, I would define this pattern as short, and right, okay, because the grouping of shots is definitely short of the pin and is definitely to the right of the pin. Now yes, there's this shot over here that was long and left. Now typically, most golfers, this is the seven, this is the shot, all right, the seven iron that went 165 yards. So the golfer thinks, oh, I hit my seven iron 165 yards. Well, that was one shot. The pattern or the grouping is right in here, probably around 145 yards. So when we're looking at a shot pattern, we're not looking at one shot, we're looking at a group of shots. And as I said earlier, everybody has a shot pattern, right, left, short, long, it doesn't matter what it is, but if you know what your pattern is, it can help you, you know, get yourself around the golf course and certainly save some strokes. So everybody hopefully can kind of see that. Now what I want you to do right now is think about your own golf game. All right, think about where you tend to hit your shots. Are you short, are you long, are you left? And let's talk a little bit about, once we know that, how we can actually use that to our advantage. Okay, because if we know understand where we're hitting the ball, we can use that. So let's say I've got one pin, two pins, and three pins, all right? Now this probably looks like 91 and 92 and 93 because my artistic skills are not very developed, so I'm gonna kinda color these in so we know they're flags. So I've got three different flags there. Let's make this realistic. Let's say that there's a bunker right here. Okay, there's a bunker over here. And we're back here again. We're talking about our golfer here from 150 yards, right? And we know right now that their pattern is short and right. So if we look at this right here, this, this option, and we're gonna make a couple assumptions here. We're gonna assume that the golfer is aiming right at the pin. 
And, and as a side note, I want you to think about that. When you're hitting a shot into the green, where do you aim? My guess is, if you're probably honest, you're aiming right at the pin. Most golfers just instinctively aim at the pin. I don't care if they're 100 yards, 150 yards, or 200 yards. Okay, and at the end of this video, I'm going to make some recommendations actually on when you can aim at the pin. But we're going to make that assumption that the golfer is aiming at the pin. So based on that, our pattern for this golfer, for example, is short and right and they're going to aim at the pin, which one of these pins, assuming they're aiming at it, gives them the best opportunity to make the most pars or birdies or the best scores on the hole out of the 10? Think about that for a second. So let's talk about that. If I aim, all right, at hole number one, I aim right at the pin, okay, the majority of my shots with this grouping are going to finish short and right. So I'm going to kind of have this type of grouping right in there. Yes, I have the one outlier. All right, remember the 700 that went 165? Yeah, that's going to be over here, right? But we're looking at a pattern. I got the other nine shots right in here. I like that spot. All right, that's pretty good. Hole number two, or target number two. If I aim right at the pin, now I'm kind of right in this area right here. I'm starting to bring some things into play here that might affect my score. I may be getting down in the bunker a little bit if I'm aiming right at the pin. Target number three. All right, short right is my miss. If I aim right at the pin, here's where I'm, my pattern's going to kind of put me. Now, based on that information, we can tell right away, obviously, that if I'm aiming right at the pin over here on the right side, I'm bringing the bunker into play. So if I have a student who's no good out of the bunker, and every time they get the ball in the bunker, it's a disaster, okay, this is a problem. This is a problem, because this is a blow-up hole waiting to happen. Even though... This is the key here now, listen to this. Even though they still hit the shot well within their pattern, they're gonna hit the shot. They're aiming right at the pin, ball goes in the bunker. They think, that was a terrible shot. Was it really a terrible shot? Was it really outside their normal pattern? No, it was not. That was not a bad shot. It was well within their pattern. It was a bad target. Okay, so when you think about that, I want to ask you a question. Knowing what we've just talked about here, knowing our pattern, how often do you think you should aim right at the pin? No matter where it's at, how often do you think you should aim right at the pin? The answer is hardly ever. Because your pattern is not directly straight. It might be a little short and right, like our example here. It could be long and left. It could be anything. But it's never directly straight. A pattern of golf shots is never directly straight. Even like a great player like Freddie Couples, if he hits a high fade, he doesn't aim right at the pin. He aims to the left of the pin because he knows where his pattern of shots falls. So the takeaway from this here, real quickly, is of course to understand where your pattern is at, and more importantly, understand how to pick the appropriate target based on that pattern. Because if you're hitting shots within your pattern, and they're finishing in the bunker, it's not your golf swing, it's your target. And then you can change that very simply. All right, now, let's take it a step further. Let's say, same way in a fairway, okay? This is a typical fairway, but down here at the tee box, all right? A couple tee markers. There's a pattern to your shots into the green, there's a pattern of shots into the fairway, all right? Typically, most golfers, not all, but most golfers, of course, are gonna finish to the right. So if they aim right here, if their aim is right in the middle of the fairway, where's their pattern going to be? And their pattern's going to probably be somewhere right in here. They're going to get a few in the fairway, but they're bringing the rough in to play. If they simply would play to their pattern, like the pros do, and, and, and think about this, a lot of the pros that you see on TV, a lot of them, they never aim at the target because they know their pattern. What they might do, if their miss is to the right, they're aiming down the left side of the fairway. Now all of a sudden their grouping or their pattern of shots is finishing right here. So if they miss it a little bit, if they hit that 165 yard 7 iron long and left, okay, they're still over here in the fairway. If they happen to miss one a little outside their pattern, they're still in the fairway. So simply understanding your pattern can definitely help you pick better targets and certainly lower your scores pretty quickly. Now I said earlier that I want to share with you kind of some guidelines. And here's the guidelines that I give my students, okay? If you're, if, if you're shooting above 90, 
If your score is anywhere above 90 on a regular basis, I would tell you to aim for the middle of the green all of the time. Unless, of course, it's a chip shot. But if you're 100 yards out, you're 150 yards out, you're 200 yards out, you should be aiming for the middle of the green. Because when you aim for the middle of the green, you give yourself a big margin of error. If you're shooting in the 80s, okay, then you can probably be a little bit more defined with your shots into the green. And of course, if you're shooting around par or below, there's going to be shots like from 50 yards and 100 yards and 125 yards where your pattern is probably pretty tight. And then of course, you can aim more right at the target. So the takeaway here from all of this is quite simple to wrap this up. All of you have a pattern to your shots. That doesn't make you a good golfer or a bad golfer. You have a pattern. If you know your pattern, short and right in our example, and you understand that and you play to your pattern and you pick good targets out, you can avoid bunkers, you can avoid big numbers, and then therefore, of course, you can shoot lower scores. Whether it be shots into the green, shots into the fairway, or wherever it might be on the golf course. Now a lot of this information, a lot of really good information about what's taking place on the golf course came out in a new book by a gentleman by the name of Mark Brody. And the book is called Every Shot Counts. And it's a book that I would highly recommend if you're into numbers and you want to really understand what's taking place on the golf course. I just read it a couple weeks ago. It has some excellent information and I think if you find the time to read it, you're going to certainly benefit and your game's going to improve. So this is what we got for today, shot patterns. Next time you hear from me, next time you hear from me, we're going to talk about putting. And we all know the phrase, drive for show, putt for dough. I'm going to help you understand how changing the way you look at your putting and how you keep track of your stats can definitely improve your putting. I look forward to our next time. Take this information to the golf course and I know you're going to enjoy yourself more and you're going to see those scores come down. Hey, thanks for taking the time to watch the video. I hope you find that information helps your game because that's really what we want to do here. As a golf coach, I want to help you play better golf. Now, as I promised you though, I was going to give you one tip on how to fix the slice. Here it is. It's called lead arm high, trail arm low. All you're going to do is simply take your lead arm and raise it slightly, lower your trail arm a little bit. This little change to your setup is going to help you swing the club a little bit more up and to the right, especially with the driver. Those two things are going to definitely increase your distance and help you get rid of that nasty slice. Now, if you want more great information on, on any part of your game, slicing, hitting the ball further, more distance, bunker play, you name it, we've got it for you at usgolftv.com. You bet. <laughs> oh yeah, TS Golf. Yeah, thanks.